Yeah, don't f- it up anymore. <laughs> Just leave it as it is. That's something that I think a lot of websites can learn from is like, just, it's working fine as it is. Don't f- with it. Hey everybody, how you doing? Corey here, and it's the middle of the day, and you know what that means. I'm here with someone special, and I am here today with, you know I have this thing for voice actors. I love voice actors. I've been talking to voice actors. They've been some of the nicest people. Uh, I've talked to some several times, and that's why I consider it a pleasure today to not only have uh, a very talented voice actor, but someone who's making the transition from voice acting to live action acting. They're also an uh, internet celebrity. Please welcome uh, Mr. Sung Wan Cho, who I've seen several times, and it's an honor to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? Uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great, and I'm looking forward to talking to you because, um, you know, a lot of the voice actors that I've talked to, they, they started out in live action and then uh, went on to work in animation and video games and whatnot. You're kind of doing the uh, the opposite of that. You are going from, uh, I guess, mostly doing uh, uh, animation and you know voice acting for TV shows and video games into doing live action acting. Um, you know, but you've already dabbled in, in somewhat. Uh, you're in uh, anime crime division on Crunchyroll, but now you're going to be in an IFC film uh, about the Blackberry. Uh, first of all, do you mind if I play a little clip of that so that everybody can see what I'm talking about? Yeah, hey, absolutely. You said they were the best engineers in the world. I said they're the best engineers in Canada. What are they paying you? I shouldn't say. They're paying me $10 million. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, how did your role in the movie come about? Uh, well, um, the director, Matt Johnson, um, I think he became familiar with me through uh, my stuff online and also, I believe, Anime Crimes Division. Uh, and so he contacted me, asking me if I'd be interested. Uh, and of course, I was very interested. <laughs> so I, yeah. it was an easy yes for me. So the experience working on the film, now you've, you've uh, as we've established, you know, you've already been doing some live action. We already mentioned the show that's on Crunchyroll, uh, Anime Crimes Division. Uh, how has the transition been from doing voice acting to live action acting? Um, I'd say, you know, the biggest change is uh, having to memorize your lines. Uh, I'm used to, you know, <laughs> having the luxury of having a script in front of me in the studio. Uh, aside from motion capture, where you do have to memorize your lines, uh, usually you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it, I, I feel like, for me, it's been, like, actually pretty smooth. Um, I'm still doing plenty of voiceover and I fully intend on doing as much voiceover as I can for, you know, the rest of my life if I'm lucky. Uh, but live action has been a fun, interesting sort of new dynamic. Uh, and I think just having to pay attention to, you know, you know your, your body language, your uh, stuff just outside of your voice, uh, it's new. Uh, but I think having two seasons of Anime Crimes Division uh, under my belt uh, really helped a lot uh, with that transition. So did you, you said motion capture. Have you done some motion capture? Mm-hmm. I've done motion capture for God of War Ragnarok. Uh, I play Ratatosker in that game, and I also helped write his dialogue as well. Yeah, you know, I was, I, I was wondering about that, because I know that there are some cases where, like, we were just talking the other day about Guardians of the Galaxy, where you have Bradley Cooper doing the voices are the voice of a rocket raccoon and then you have james gunn's brother doing the 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 motion capture so you know i didn't know i know sometimes you can just do the voice and sometimes you do it all so when you do motion capture you know you got to put on the rig you got to put on the suit and everything is it is that something that's fun or is it kind of a pain to do it's fun. I think it's a novelty for me. I think maybe if I was doing motion capture all the time, maybe I'd get a little tired of putting on that suit over and over again. But for me, it was very exciting because that was my first time ever doing it. And you know, for such a big game like God of War, I was just psyched to be there. You know, um, so it's definitely like a fun novelty at this point. If I start doing it all the time, maybe I'll get tired of it. But I don't know. Something about it is still so exciting to me that. Uh, I, I, uh, I I just get dazzled by it. So you, you don't mind moving on to more live action films then? I don't mind. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they'll have me. 
Um, for me, I think the live action world is just like, hey, if they want me, uh, I'd love to do more. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, the right project and uh, who wants to have me, you know. But yeah. otherwise, you know, voiceover is still going very strong and I'm very passionate about it. Um, but I would love to do more live action uh, if that's in my future. Well, you definitely have it in the area of voice acting. You're very, extremely, extremely talented. Uh, Thank you. I mean, if you don't mind, I would love to show people your reel because you've done everything. As in this short amount of time that we've been talking, we've already established that you've done uh, TV shows and video games and everything in between, um, and all of those are so different that you know you're doing many different voices. So, if it's okay, I'd like to show a little bit of your reel right here. Yeah, sure, absolutely. By the power of Headmaster vested in me, we hereby bestow unto thee the rank of Salamander. What a cruel child. This is uncomfortable, but according to my information, your debt has soared to height once considered quite impossible. I am not interested in your excuses. My perfect plan has been foiled. <sighs> Competing against a truly strong rival will help you reach new heights. I look forward to the time I can battle all out. I'm Holst Sigisvald <laughs> Goneril, in command of defense here. I'm impressed you were able to scrape together this many troops in so short a time. My goodness, what a strapping physique. Capable of an astounding variety of acts of violence, I imagine. Huge projects, as we can see here. As Again, you know, uh, TV shows. Uh, for those who are listening and couldn't tell, I mean, because the titles were at the bottom of the screen, but this was everything from uh, Adventure Time to, uh, as we just mentioned earlier, uh, God of War, Ragnarok, huge projects. And when you have to do so many different projects of so many different, you know, uh, types, such different natures, uh, how different is the you know the 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 approach for each one of those you know when you you know is there a different way of working when you're doing so many different projects i think it depends on the medium uh video games usually have a lot more lines uh can usually be a lot more strenuous if it's something that's very battle heavy like a lot of you know yelling or getting hurt or doing damage um whereas if it's like a cartoon um usually you're you know running through whole scenes you know and just going through uh, versus video games are usually like line by line. Um, so it really just depends on what uh, the medium is. Um, and also the character type, of course, you know, uh, I feel like I play a pretty wide variety of types of characters. So um, whatever the character requires, you know, vocally, uh, you know, that can also be a factor as well. Um, so yeah, it really just depends on what uh, the project is. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I see consistently when talking to voice actors is that you have the luxury of working at home, or at least the people I've talked to have had the luxury of working at home. They've all bragged about how it's so great to be able to just not go anywhere. And, and that, you know, I talked to uh, uh, Brad Dorf, who does the voice of Chucky, and even for something mm -hmm. like Chucky, you know, because we're thinking about cartoons and video games, and we assume that people can stay at home for that. But for even something like a show like Chucky, Brad Dorf stays at home and records in his booth. Mm. So do you get that luxury of being able to stay at home and record it, uh, in, in a booth that you've made there? I think I'm one of the weird ones where I like going into studio. Uh, so for me, whenever I uh, actually 99% of the time, uh, I'm always in studio because for me, uh, it's still fun to go in, you know, uh, see, the, you know, meet the engineer, uh, the director, if they're there, usually they're not these days. Um, and, you know, a big thing for me is also, uh, I really don't like engineering myself. I feel like engineers are invaluable. They're such an important part of the industry that, you know, I'd rather, you know, they do all the, the work that's, you know, cause they're so good at it because me having to, you know, mess with gain and stuff is a pain for me. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, for me, I actually love going in studio, uh, provided that it's, you know, proper safety guidelines and stuff. Uh, I always go in if possible. So are you in L.A.? I am in L.A., yes. Okay. Yeah, so just being in L.A., I assume, just makes it very easy to go from studio to studio. Yeah, yeah, it's not too much of a hassle for me. Uh, I totally get why other actors want to, you know, work from home, because, it's, I mean, frankly, it's easier, you know, and, you know, 
probably a lot e uh, cozier as well, but I don't know. For me, the I've always, you know, I always dreamed of working in the studio, and <laughs> for me, it's fun every time to actually go in there. Nice. Uh, you, being so talented as you are, doing voice work, how long have you been doing this? I mean, not doing it professionally, but... I mean, did you, were you have you been doing just different voices and weird voices and crazy voices since you were a kid? Um, well, let's see. Professionally, I've been doing it about nine years now. Um, but as a kid, I well, I didn't do a ton of weird voices as a kid. I was very interested in voice actors. Uh, just even before I knew I wanted to become one myself, uh, I was always the kid who recognized voice actors voices and I would look up their names in the credits like <laughs> and be like oh okay that's uh that's frank welker oh that's jeff bennett that's uh jennifer hale you know just having an ear for those uh was something that i just had this weird encyclopedic ear for and then i it was around high school when i started to get interested in actually doing it uh, a friend of mine used to write radio plays and he would you know cast all those friends including me to do the voices and that was sort of when I developed the love for performing and acting and um when I was like you know I I would love to be able to do this professionally uh so I guess high school onward was when I started to like practice and you know try to figure out how to make it in the industry you know it's interesting that you say you were the kid that knew all the voice actors you know you would actually tune in to see you know who is who knew, and, and get to know their names so is there a particular voice actor that had a huge influence on you oh man so many uh tom kane uh he uh recently retired uh but he you know professor utonium from powerpuff girls you know yoda just like absolutely amazing um he's great Corey burton uh tons of disney projects um, Tom Kenny, Jeff Bennett, Frank Welker, uh, you got your, your, you know, uh, Jennifer Hale, you know, all, all the sort of like legends, Kat Susie, uh, all the voice, voice actors I heard in my childhood, <laughs> I really looked up to, uh, uh, and so they were a huge influence on me. Have you had a chance to meet some of your heroes? Um, I haven't. Not like directly. Uh, I've been in the same uh, Zoom call as like Tom Kenny uh, for uh, Bat Wheels, but um, uh, because of recording these days, group recordings aren't nearly as common anymore, unfortunately. Um, so it, I, I feel like stuff that I've been working on, normally I would have been able to meet, you know, the other voice actors, but uh, it, it's been much, you know, harder to do that now. Um, so, fingers crossed, you know, I would yeah. love to meet more of them. I think you would definitely get along with Tom Kenny, man. I got a, I had a chance to interview him, an extremely nice guy. But, I, you know, it's funny, all the voice actors that I've, that I've interviewed are just some of the nicest and most humble people. I don't, and I don't know what that is, man. I don't know if it's because they just mix in with a different crowd, you know, or, you know, just, it's just a different vibe that goes on with them as opposed to live action actors but yeah they've they, you know amazing people man uh, some of the most mm, generous and, and, and very kind people um so even with uh, your your career being as successful as it is you still do your youtube channel which is pro zd did i did i state that right pro zd yeah pro zd yeah uh so usually when someone starts you know working in live action and you know and then they start to go hollywood and then they start to move up and, you know, and they kind of, I don't you know, maybe abandon is a strong word, but they kind of, because they're doing this new thing, you know, they, they see it as a step up. You know, I've did, I've did this thing before, now I'm moving on to this other thing right here, uh, especially when it comes to something like, you know, doing social media or doing a YouTube channel. But you stay strong with it. Uh, what keeps you coming back to your YouTube channel? I think for me, I mean, one, frankly speaking, it, it's a source of income, right? Like, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it helps, you know, not, you know, I, I think it's good to have, uh, you know, uh, not just put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, and, you know, that goes for voiceover and live action as well, you know, um, branching out, I think is, can only help you out. But I think also more importantly, it's something that I still enjoy. Uh, if I got tired of it or, you know, 
whatever, then I think I would have stopped. But I think at the pace that I do YouTube, uh, it's at a pace that I still enjoy. Um, I know a lot of YouTube creators get really burnt out because they are they feel forced to keep pumping out videos and such. But I think for me, it's been very important since the beginning to just make videos that I like at the pace that I am happy with. You know, I don't want to be, I could be making, you know, more money, I guess, but for me, it's more my happiness is and self-satisfaction and creativity is more important. Uh, that and, you know, with a lot of voice acting and stuff that's, you know, been popping up, and you know, more and more in my life, uh, I've had less time uh, for YouTube, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, uh, because for me, you, uh, voice acting has been like, you know, my, my passion. Um, but yeah, I think for me, it's just keeping a healthy relationship with YouTube, um, you know, doing what I, stuff that I still want to do, not chasing trends, not feeling forced to be phony or anything like that. Just making stuff I like at the pace I like is what has kept me on the platform. You know, that's, you know, when you say chasing trends, I, I guess it's not so it's not so much pressure for you because you do have your voice acting career. You know, you have something else. Um, so you don't I guess you don't feel this need to keep surpassing your YouTube videos. You know, you already have this other career. But do you think that that is something that is today? I don't know if you could say you would say wrong with YouTube because, you know, uh, you doing what you do, you know, they, they do. You, if you, you seem to be doing videos that is what YouTube used to be. You know, you used to say broadcast yourself. Uh, now it seems like they have this whole mysterious algorithm in place uh, where people, you know, they got to keep up with trends. They got to keep talking about mm -hmm. these, you know, they got to do, they got to do outrageous things. Uh, do you feel like YouTube today is less about broadcasting yourself and trying to top everybody else and stay up with the current trends? I think it depends on the channel. Um, I do get that sort of comment a lot that my YouTube channel feels like it's from like 10 years ago. And honestly, I take that as a compliment. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, but I also do, you know, I have friends who are, you know, in the industry who are, take their channel very seriously and put a lot of production, production value into it. Uh, but I think what, you know, keeps, you know, certain YouTube creators uh, happy and fulfilled is again like just making stuff they want to make um, I think there is a lot of that on the platform now just chasing trends and you know pumping out stuff that you think is going to make you know big views or whatever uh, and there's nothing wrong with that I guess but if you don't have any passion behind it uh, you're just going to feel empty I guess or it's just going to feel like a chore Yeah, which is fine if that's what you're you know if you just want to make a bunch of money and not enjoy it that's okay like that's totally valid um but i think the most creatively satisfied people on there um i, I always say it's it's like a win-win if you can find a video that you know you want to make but your audience also enjoys like you know then it's like great both of us win like it's not just a video that I don't want to make, but people like it, you know, uh, I think having that sort of, you know, balance, like we're, we're, we're all happy with this video, the creator, the audience, mm -hmm. um, that's the best case scenario. You know, you, what I, you did a video that I loved like everybody else, because you kind of addressed YouTube and some of the, some of the policy changes, the confusing policy changes that they were doing, you know, and, you, and so you've come in and made videos where you either poking fun at YouTube or just outright criticizing them. I'm going to show uh, this video right here. <laughs> video, uh, uh, YouTube is run by fools. <laughs> and I think a lot of people cheered you on when you did this because they were feeling the, the, the same way you were, you know, very strongly about it. And they were happy to see you criticize the, the, the policy changes that they made. YouTube's new policy for limiting ads is if you have any profanity within the first 8 to 15 seconds of a video, then the advertising revenue will be limited. So just uh, wait a few seconds here.
That's the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard. Anyway, <laughs> hey, you too. <laughs> yeah? How about all the channels you support with ads that spew hate speech regularly? Did they say a no-no word in the first 15 seconds? I guess not. Then that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people cheered this on, including myself. Uh, have you been affected at all by any of the uh, policy changes that YouTube has made ever? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, th that video was in reaction to being affected by those changes. I think that video is flagged. It's either that or the second part <laughs> one. I forget. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I've always been very critical of YouTube whenever they bring out just sudden... You know, unexplained changes that, uh, you know, affect people because it affects people's livelihoods. You know, people, you know, they're especially if it like affects videos that were already like okay, and now all of a sudden, due to new sudden changes in policy, they're getting flagged or demonetized. Uh, you know, it, it's not great. And so I think, at least for me, I feel like YouTube does pay attention when I, uh, put out a video like that. Uh, I'm not saying I'm directly responsible for them rolling it back, but I, I, I'm sure I had a little hand in, you know, uh, them realizing, oh, uh, maybe we shouldn't do this, because they definitely walked it back, I think, like, a couple months later from what I remember. Well, that's kind of a, you know, I mean, since we already put profanity out there, that's kind of a shitty thing, right? I mean, that you have all these creators who, are, who have been very vocal about these policy changes being being uh, uh, harmful and mm. you know and, and you know you're talking about millions of people saying this and they're not being listened to and then it takes some of the top creators like you know someone like yourself someone who has millions of subscribers and whatnot you know it takes them to say something i mean that right there seems like it's just you know it's wrong because you're you're ignoring the people who really make up the the, the platform yeah, no, I totally agree. And in fact, even uh, sometimes they still ignore people, you know, with my subscriber count, you know, like it just, it, it can be very frustrating. That, that's something that's definitely a big hurdle with YouTube is sometimes it's just inexplicably, you know, uh, they'll uh, demonetize or do this and there's really nothing you can do about it. If you're a small creator, you're especially screwed. Uh, but even if, even bigger creators, you know, oftentimes it's like, Nothing you can really do. You can try to crusade on Twitter and stuff, and maybe sometimes that'll help, but uh, I've still, I mean, there are still videos of mine that are still demonetized for no reason that I'm just like, well, <laughs> I can't do anything about it. I mean, just have to accept that, unfortunately. Do you see things getting better, or do you see things getting worse? I know they came out and they, they you know, they pulled back on the... The, the, the thing you did the video about, you know, the profanity in the first few seconds of the, uh, the video. Do you think that uh, they will continue to improve, or do you think that this is just a temporary uh, 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 thing that they did? I don't see them ever getting better. I I just want them to stay net, net no negative, just regular. Like, that's <laughs> all I can hope for. Just don't screw it up. Can I swear on this? Yes, you right? can. We already did. Yeah, don't fuck it up anymore. <laughs> Just leave it as it is. That's something that I think a lot of websites can learn from is like, just, it's working fine as it is. Don't fuck with it. Let it go. And then if bringing, you know, stupid changes. I mean, Twitter is an absolute dumpster fire right now. Yeah. Uh, because of all the changes. Uh, YouTube isn't nearly as bad. Um, and so, you know, like I'll say, like the, I feel like before the those changes we were talking about, last couple of years I was like YouTube's too, it's okay actually I think it's actually not you know stable it's like and then every now and then they'll just throw out a new thing especially stuff that's just on no warning that's the most <laughs> frustrating bit is like oh surprise here's a new thing that nobody knew about unless you read the fine print in an email or whatever yeah um, so all I can hope for is that they just don't fuck it up and it just is fine. Uh, if it gets better, that'd be a miracle. I'm not. I'm not that optimistic. Yeah. A <laughs> uh, couple of things before we go. Uh, you, being an Asian, uh, you know, actor, voice actor, not actor. Uh, you know, everybody talks about diversity, and I'm not. You know, I'm not here to like. You know, 
be too controversial or point bangers or anything like that. But, you know, speaking of diversity and you now starting to venture out into live action acting, uh, how do you feel about, I guess, you being, you know, uh, again, being Asian, uh, do you feel like your, your opportunities are limited? Or do you feel like more opportunities would be open to you if you were, you know, a white male, uh, being by what you've seen so far? I definitely would have more opportunities if I were white, for sure. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I think there have been changes in a positive way. Um, and not just for, you know, Asians, but for, you know, all, all you know, for different races, different genders, you know. Um, there have been steps, and it has been... Improving. I mean, even comparing now to like, let's say like 10, you know, five, 10 years ago, it's definitely changed. Like, I, I think studios are much more aware of, um, hey, we should, you know, cast authentically, you know. Uh, so there have been some good steps. We still have a long way to go. Um, and I, I'm just hoping that, you know, as time goes on, you know, more and more doors will open for, you know, diverse, diverse talent. Uh, and we still have a long way to go, though. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, it'll continue to get better uh, as time goes on. So you, when you do voice acting, I would think that it wouldn't really be that much of a hindrance because you're behind a mic and you can play, you know, you're, you're, you're not being seen on, on camera and you can do different voices for any kind of character. You know, you, you actually did a, uh, you know, you did a voice for, uh, uh, the Riddler, you know, which mm -hmm. I should, I should show people because you were, you were very great at that. You had your own take on the Riddler right there. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's a whole catalog of disasters. Get it? Like, like catalog. I get it. Okay. I get it. Now I was, I was looking at that Riddler right there. Was he a? Is that an Asian Riddler or is that a? Is that a? Is that a white Riddler? That is an Asian Riddler. Oh, which nice. I don't. I don't think originally was intended. Like I um, when I got the auditions, I it was there was no mention of like you know an Asian. We're like we're looking for an Asian actor. Uh, I think uh, he was actually made Asian after I was cast, which was pretty cool. Like that's the first. <laughs> you know, the first time we've had an Asian Riddler, which is awesome. So, yeah. Um, I am thankful for voiceover in that I can audition for, you know, uh, not, not I'm not limited to my appearance. Uh, I feel like that's something that's, you know, tough about live action is that uh, I'm always going to be limited by my appearance. Yeah. But I'll always be very passionate and love voiceover so much because I can play so many different characters. Um so yeah, I mean, I, I was I I love playing Riddler though, and yeah, when when the character design, the final design came out for him, I was I got a kick out of it. I was like, oh wow, it's an Asian Riddler. That that that's awesome. It's that's cool because never you've uh, before. you've made history then as uh, the first Asian. I Riddler. guess technically, yeah, yeah. It's cool, it's cool to think about. So last question here, I'm sure you get this a lot, but I'm going to ask it anyway because I want to ask for myself. Uh, the name. Your YouTube name, Pro ZD. Now you put out a tweet here. You talked about your wife. I've been married to <laughs> Cherizard for six years. Uh, we've been together for fourteen years, and I've known her for even longer before that. Only tonight did she finally learn what Pro ZD stands for. She's the only person who will ever know this dark secret. Is there a particular reason why you keep this name a secret? It's very embarrassing. That <laughs> um, I made that username when I was. In elementary school and it's just so dumb so it's best that nobody else just knows what it stands for it's just very silly okay um yeah um i feel like every now I, i'll say this much i feel like people have gotten close to what certain parts of it might mean but i don't think it's something you can just guess that's like a little a little hint i guess um but yeah it would be it would be like incredible if someone was like, oh, I think it, it means this, because it'd just be so out of nowhere. But, yeah, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be a secret I take to my grave. I think. Yeah. Is it D for Dick? 
<laughs> oh, you got it. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's actually uh, uh, protracted uh, zebra dick. <laughs> Man, don't, you should right share here. that with the world. Don't be ashamed of that. I mean, that's actually yeah. a good laugh right there. Yeah, right. <laughs> I never would have got the rest of it, but protracted ze zebra dick. <laughs> that's nice, man. I, yeah, that kind of made my day right there. Hey, <laughs> being able to talk to you has made my day. Again, you're another, you're another one in a, in a line of very, very, uh, very humble and very nice uh, voice actors. And of course, you're expanding beyond that. But congratulations on everything, your success. Oh, no. Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind words. And yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, this was fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, actually seeing the movie. So before you go, everybody, check it out. Uh, Sung Wan Cho will be in Blackberry. That, when is this coming out? Oh, when is it coming out? Uh, I forget if they announced the release date or not. Uh, so I don't necessarily want to say it in case they didn't. Um, but it should be coming out soonish. I'm just gonna take a look and see if they. Yeah, because I'm looking forward to this. I'm gonna see if it says this at the end of the trailer. It probably did um, say. No, I did not. I don't. It doesn't look like they've officially announced uh, the theatrical release yet. But uh, keep you know keep your eyes peeled. Um, I've seen the movie already. Uh, at I, I went to the Toronto uh, premiere, and it's great. I I really enjoyed it a lot. Like even if I wasn't in the movie, <laughs> I I was I still would have loved it. So uh, yeah, highly recommend people go see it when it does come out. Uh, yeah, because uh, it's it's very entertaining. Well, I'm very much looking forward to it myself. And you can also see Sung Wan Cho and TV shows, video games, and many other things. So again, congratulations on that, and I appreciate it, man. I'll be uh I'll be watching. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right. Have a good one. You too. And there we go. Another one. Another great interview because of another great personality that we have right there. And you can see all these interviews on Double Toasted Interviews. Go to our channel. Check it out. We have plenty of other talented people, great people, you know, directors, actors, voice actors, animators, internet personalities. Kind of got all that in one right there. Well, he's not an animator, but he works in animation. So if you like this interview, please go listen to or watch the others. And watch everything else we do on DoubleToaster.com. In fact, I'm always around for you. You can get a hold of me anytime you like. I'm Corey Coleman, and if you want to reach me, here's how you do so. KCoolmans at gmail.com. That's K C O O L M A N Z at gmail.com. Email us with any kind of questions, comments, compliments, insults, input, and our advice. Also, hit us up on our social medias Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We also have TikTok, Patreon. That's not listed right there. But if you type in double toasted, it'll take you exactly where you need to be. And if you find yourself here in Austin, Texas, we'd love to hang out with people and meet all the people who make us what we are and make us successful. So please do not hesitate to get a hold of us, but let us know ahead of time so we can make time for you. Kcoolmans at gmail.com is where you're gonna reach us. Let us know what your plans for Austin, whether you're moving here or just passing through. Whatever they are, let us know and we'll do our best to hang out with you. All right, everybody, that is it. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate your support. I really do appreciate you watching these videos. And we will talk to you soon. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are listening to or watching this, goodbye and stay toasty.